Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we are taking a look at a brand new piece of lost media from Playtime Co. that promises to shed some light on some of the new toy mascots we are to meet during Poppy Playtime Chapter 3, as well as a mysterious ARG that may explain the backstory to central antagonist Catnap. There's a ton of new info to go over in today's video, so let's get started right away by looking at the latest VHS tape and a host of new characters known as the Smiling Critters. Last week, Mob Entertainment released this image, which seemed to showcase a line of toys previously unseen in the Poppy Playtime universe. Eight small cuddly animals known as the Smiling Critters, and the reason why is fairly obvious. They all wear an eerily large grin plastered across their face. Each of these animals are a different colour and species. Left to right we see an elephant, pig, unicorn, dog, rabbit, cat, bear and chicken. Each animal features a different charm attached to a zipper which runs down their chest. It seems these animals acted as scented comforters to help young children sleep by night. It is unclear what the symbols mean, but we can theorise that the elephant may be intelligent, hence the light bulb. The pig, hungry, symbolised by the apple. The unicorn, friendly, as it features a flower. The dog, happy, because he wears a sunny charm. The rabbit, full of energy, represented by a bolt of lightning. The cat, associated with sleep, as signified by the moon symbol. The bear, lovable, hence the heart. And the chicken, the star of a group, as they wear, well, a star. Then, a few days later, this cartoon graphic emerged, which confirmed the name of this group to be the Smiling Critters, and with this artwork, a new VHS released. This VHS seems to be an episode from a cartoon show themed around the Critters, and is reminiscent of the Mommy Longlegs commercial that launched ahead of Poppy Playtime Chapter 2. It seems these Critters were so popular that Playtime Co. launched their very own kids show. So, with our analysis of these critters out the way, let's break down this short cartoon bit by bit, and see what we can learn about this joyful gang of animal misfits. The cartoon begins with a fairly uneventful intro. It seems very much like a typical kids cartoon show intro, where we are introduced to each of the critters in turn as they play and frolic together. Things then immediately take a far darker turn, as we find seven of the critters hiding in a house deep within the woods, in the midst of a windstorm. As they cower in fear, the dog does his best to try and calm his friend's nerves. Suddenly, there is a knock at the door, which creaks open to reveal the silhouette of the cat-like critter smiling in a highly unnerving manner. Now, all of the other critters appear to be joyful too, and welcome the cat, referring to him as Catnap. The critters beg Catnap to help them sleep, and the purple cat obliges by releasing a plume of red smoke into the room. Though this shot no longer seems hand-drawn, and instead employs the use of a lifelike plushie instead. Please, help us go to sleep, Catnap! We need it, Catnap! Please help us! Sleep, sleep, sleep! The sleeping gas sends the critters into hysterics as they begin to laugh uncontrollably, to the point where their laughter distorts briefly into a horrifying scream of terror. <laughs> we then cut to a shot of all the critters asleep on the floor. Or are they? It almost looks as if they have died from laughter. Catnap eerily sits at the far side of a room, surrounded by the bodies of his fellow critters, still alive as he stares directly into the screen, a static grin frozen on his face. 
It seems this moment of hysteria followed by a deep sleep is the fabled hour of joy we've heard so much about in the lead up to Poppy Playtime Chapter 3. A twisted take on the original purpose of these toys who were designed as scented plushies to help children sleep soundly by night. This cartoon also helps us finally make sense of those cryptic wall scratchings seen in the Chapter 3 teaser trailer. My somniferous flock is likely Catnap's way of referring to the other critters, who worship him like a god, the critters acting like a cult, with Catnap as their ringleader. This leaves us to ponder whether we'll meet more of these critters than Catnap in Chapter 3, with the Hour of Joy potentially activating them. Now let's switch gears as we explore information gathered from a recent ARG held over on the Playtime Co. website. Over the last few weeks, Mob Entertainment has gradually dropped clues, allowing the community to access different folders within a computer, which seems to belong to Playtime's head of security, Leif Pierre. By accessing these various folders, documents, images, and video files slowly became available. While I'm not going to go over every single thing contained within this elaborate ARG, I will condense some of the most important information and explain how it relates to Catnap and the other smiling critters. You may also remember that the Chapter 3 teaser trailer features our first look at Catnap, whose signature smile and claws can be seen at various points throughout. We also got our first look at this cat way back in July, when this teaser image released. Catnap is sure to be a most terrifying new addition to the world of Poppy Playtime. One of the most iconic features associated with Catnap is his ability to dispel red smoke that seems to bring both uncontrollable joy to those who inhale it, as well as eventually placing them into a deep sleep. Considering Chapter 3 is titled Deep Sleep, and we have been informed that the gas mask will feature as a key mechanic to survive in this upcoming episode, it seems logical to assume this smoke is deadly if inhaled in large doses. This signified by the disturbing ending to the Smiling Critters cartoon show. The ARG also contained a sinister video titled Red Smoke Test, where we witnessed the substance being administered to what sounds like a group of crying orphans. Due to the experiments being conducted on the orphan children of a Playtime Co. factory, it is my belief that the smoke was used as a way to keep the children comatose by night so they could not attempt to escape, as well as keeping them feeling joyful even under the most miserable and stressful of circumstances. An incident report from child counsellor Claire Harper, also located within a file on Life's computer, tells the story of Marie Payne, a child we previously read about during our journey through the game station in Poppy Playtime Chapter 2. The report details how Marie suffered an intense nightmare, one so horrifying that Claire was unable to wake her from it. Marie's skin became hot to the touch, her heart racing, and her complexion turning pale as a ghost. It seems the counsellor is perhaps unaware of the red smoke being administered to the orphan children, which was surely the cause of this episode. However, the counsellor threatens to take further action against Playtime Co. if a similar incident occurs again. The next piece of a puzzle comes with a tragic accident that occurred at the Playcare, involving the near death of an orphan child named Theodore Gramble. Theo's accident is detailed in a conversation between two Playtime employees, Joel Sinclair, the head counsellor, and Dr. Thomas Clark, the on-site paediatrician. Side note, you may remember that Thomas Clark was the Playtime employee who ended up inside the Brontoy after apparently volunteering for the procedure, as a way to escape death from terminal cancer. The subject is 59-year-old Thomas Clark, a full-time employee at Playtime Co. since... 1955. Six months ago, he was diagnosed with terminal lung cancer. Now, Mr. Clark of Sound Mind has volunteered for this experiment. The conversation between these two is transcribed as follows. Thomas? Hi, Joel. We need to talk. I'm still trying to piece everything together. That would make two of us. Do you have an update on Theodore? Last I heard, they were loading him into an ambulance. That was half an hour ago, I think. He's alive and at the hospital, but that's all I was told. I guess that's something. Do, uh, you have any idea what happened to him? Paramedics said he was electrocuted. Current stopped his heart. My goodness, the poor kid. I saw the burns as they were wheeling him out, but nobody knew what was going on. 
Something about him sneaking out of Home Sweet Home and trying to open a maintenance door out of Playcare. He had somehow gotten his hands on one of those new grab packs with a green hand attachment. Either something malfunctioned or he just made a mistake. He's seven. How would he know to do that in the first place? We're not really addressing the elephant in the room here, are we? Are you suggesting what I think you are? This imaginary friend of Theodore's. What if that thing is what he's been talking about? I don't know. He's always been a bit odd. Hard to get a read on, but that's... They found a second grab pack by the maintenance door, and the door needs two people to open it. This is the only thing I can think of that makes any sense. Okay, that's... Okay, that's strange. I hadn't heard about that. And it dropped him at the office doorstep. I saw that thing with my own eyes, Joel. It was... Well, I don't know what it was. But it and Theodore were working together somehow. Maybe... Maybe you're right. Either way, I'm just glad security stepped in and got things under control. Do you have any idea what they did with that thing? Not a clue. I don't want to know, to be honest. It's sure not going to be in my briefing for the rest of the Playcare staff this morning. Speaking of which, I should probably go. It's crafts day today and I'm going to need a good few minutes to put my happy face back on for the kids. If you do get any more info on Theodore's condition, will you let me know? Of course. Thanks Thomas, I'll check in with you around lunch. End of call. From this conversation we learn that the orphan child Theo had an imaginary friend, who led him to steal two grab packs and attempt to escape. While using the green hand of his grab pack, which conducted electricity, Theo accidentally shocked himself and barely survived, now severely burned and taken to intensive care. We are given a hint at who this imaginary friend may be when looking at this picture drawn by Theo. A claw emerges from underneath the child's bed, one that looks suspiciously similar to that of Experiment 1006, the prototype. It seems as though the prototype used Theo to try and escape containment, influencing him to steal a pair of grab packs so that the two of them could open security doors around the Playtime factory and attempt a breakout. Unfortunately, the plan backfired and left Theo hanging on to life by a thread. Finally, let's take a look at a series of reports contained within a folder on Leif's computer labelled the Bigger Bodies Initiative. We have heard of this initiative before. It seems to be the name of a procedure used to transfer human consciousness into mascot experiments in a bid to create living, breathing toys that could then help out around the facility. We have seen these in previous chapters, with creations such as Mommy Longlegs, Kissy Missy and Huggy Wuggy. Catnap seems to be the latest in the line of these bigger body experiments, and may contain the consciousness of Theodore after that terrible accident left the boy in critical condition. In the Bigger Bodies Initiative folder, there is a file labelled 1188, an experiment number that we have not heard of before. One I believe relates directly to Catnap himself. While much of the report has been redacted and is therefore unreadable, we can still learn a fair amount about Experiment 1188 by skimming through it. Experiment 1188 is said to be the most successful of the bigger body's experiments to date, featuring enhanced mobility and to be used in an area of a playtime factory known as Home Sweet Home. This may well be one of the new areas we will explore in Poppy Playtime Chapter 3 a place where the orphan children were housed and cared for by night after completing their testing in the game station by day. The report goes on to detail how the procedure of transferring a human brain into one of the playtime mascots works. It mentions reducing the risk of prematurely decoupling the brainstem from the spinal cord. It sounds like this medical procedure was highly risky and there were many failed attempts. The report also mentions something known as the Golden Path which appears to be the scientists most efficient way of creating a living mascot within the Bigger Bodies program. Again, we have seen this term referred to before, followers of the Golden Path. The report also mentions layers of purple fabric. This is the material associated with catnap, and therefore a clue as to this report being in relation to said mascot. Later in the report, it is mentioned that Experiment 1188 will be able to contort its body to a third of its normal size, indicating that Catnap may be able to squeeze through tight spaces much smaller than its stature via a form of contortion. 
At the end of a report, a list of 12 potential candidates are detailed. One of the names on this list is none other than Theodore Gramble, the boy who went on to suffer that horrific accident. Therefore, it seems probable that after Theo's accident, he ended up as a candidate in the catnap experiment. His consciousness transferred into the mascot as part of the bigger body initiative. This also helps us make sense of more of those cryptic wall scratchings in the previous trailer. Phrases such as, I live to serve our angel of salvation, and the original saved me, I rejoice in him, may well be Theodore, now reborn in the form of catnap, referring to how the prototype saved him. Inadvertently granting him access to a powerful new body, which then allowed the vengeful child to exact revenge on the scientists at Playtime Co who had once tormented him. But we'll have to wait until Chapter 3 launches to see if this theory holds any truth. But with that, we come to the end of this video and a look at both the latest Poppy Playtime VHS and its associated ARG. I hope you found this analysis helpful, fun and informative. It certainly seems as though there are still many dark mysteries to uncover as we continue our journey into the depths of the Playtime Co factory in Poppy Playtime Chapter 3. I'll be sure to keep you updated with the latest news in the lead up to its release, but in the meantime, what do you make of this new information? Let me know in the comments section below and be sure to leave a like on this video if you did enjoy it and of course subscribe for more horror related content. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video.